In today's video, we're going to do something a little different. You see, we got a chance to meet one of our followers, a member of our community, and a subscriber. We've asked him if he would consider allowing us to interview him. You see, he has some very specific skills in relation to RVing, and he and his wife are RVers as well. His name is Martin, and he is an NRVTA Certified RV Technician. You know what's always fun? Is meeting one of your followers, one of your subscribers, when you're a creator on YouTube. We met one of the nicest guys. His name is uh, Martin. I think it's Martin Urena. Yeah, I think that's it, Martin Urena. He's a mobile tech. And the great part is, is we've had people ask us who we would use if there was ever a problem with uh, their rigs, uh, even even just at this park and. We don't really know anybody special or different. We've never had to use anyone before. <coughs> but the good thing about this is that Martin's in the area right now. He's gonna be here for a little while. And he provides services to most of the Phoenix Valley and, and other parts not too super far away. I mean, you gotta remember that good help doesn't come cheap, but you don't end up having to pay to have it done over and over and over again. He's one of these guys that actually took the initiative to become a, uh, an RVer like us. And he went to the NRVTA training school, the big red barn, with the uh, Mr. Beard himself. Martin spent the time, his time and money to be there to learn how to become a service tech. And so he is a certified RV technician. We very rarely ever put any, out any recommendations about anything or anyone. But this time, when it comes to our community, and if there's anybody that needs assistance, Martin would probably be a very good source. Name of his company is My Mobile RV Tech. And, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's Martin's card. That's his email. And besides being a very nice person, a very good person, Martin seems to have really good knowledge of uh, of RV technical uh, services. So I'd like to suggest that if you have a need for a technician anywhere in the area, you might give Martin a call and see if there's anything he can do to help. He'll be more than glad to talk to you on the phone and give you some ideas. And uh, we're gonna try to get in touch with him here in a little bit again and see if I can't do a quick interview on him and get some more of the details about how he works and uh, some of the costs and stuff like that. Sorry, I'm on my way to pick up some medicine for Shelly. And I'm trying to make sure I concentrate on my driving. Talk to you guys again in just a little bit. If you have any questions for Martin, he will most likely be lurking around on the channel, our videos, and if he can, he'll respond to your questions about RV technical issues in the comments below. You know, another really good thing about RVers that I've always noticed is that we all tend to band together when it comes to helping each other. Another viewer and subscriber, really good friend, Jeff, and his uh, family come down from Washington all the time and we see him here at uh, in the Phoenix RV parks particularly the uh, Encore parks 
Jeff's having some work done on his truck and it's going to be down for a few weeks and he does the Encore three weeks in, week or two out, back and forth between Monta Vista and some of the other parts in the area. And while his tow vehicle is down, he just kind of offhanded asked if uh, we'd be able to help out and I said, yeah, absolutely. So it's going to fall on a day that is a travel day for us, which is a five 5.3 mile travel to our next park. It'll actually be back from the park that we'll be at to Monta Vista where we are right now. And we'll try to leave there early, get into Monta Vista a little early, disconnect, level out, hook up power and water and sewer real quickly, and then I'll run back over with the truck, which is just a few spaces away, to uh, Jeff's rig. We'll hook up to it, and then we'll run up and move him to his next spot. That way he doesn't have to worry about trying to find somebody that uh, knows something about RVing or get a hot shot to actually move the rig. We had that help when our rig was down, and it's, it's amazing to find friends and people they can do things for you. So we're very proud and honored to be able to help him out and really looking forward to it. One of the main things I like to do is I like to teach people. Yeah. So, you know, I have had customers. Um, I don't know if you've gone and seen any of my reviews. Yes. Uh -huh. But very nice ones. Too. I have customers that they're like, hey, I want to do this myself, but I need someone there. Guidance. Yeah. And so I do that at a much, much lower rate than when That's I'm actually awesome. working on it. Yeah. Because I'm just teaching them. Right. Uh huh. And they love it. Oh, absolutely. Well, the NRVTA, they've, they've got their the, the rig owners course, don't mm -hmm. they? Yeah. So they're big about doing that as well. Um, yeah. Have you ever watched any of Changing Lanes? Chad yes. and Tara's? Changing Lanes. Where um, he took that course, a portion of it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Less junk, more journey. Less junk, more journey. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, I like them. I watch them a lot. Yeah. Um, my RV works. Yes, I've seen them. Honestly, that too. yeah. So he he was an NRVTA instructor actually. Oh wow. Okay. And he occasionally comes down, and I was lucky enough that when I was down there, he was there. Oh, fantastic. And he stepped in partially on our AC course. Yeah. For air conditioners. God, that's great. And it was amazing. And the guy is great. I mean, his YouTube yeah. videos, if you, <clears throat> if you have some basic knowledge, mm -hmm. he can help you fix anything. Yeah. Oh, that's really great. Yeah. We, we look forward to it. It's, especially in today's time, everybody's struggling. Oh, yeah. And it's hard. And one of the first things that I want to get out is that, um, number one, this is... Martin and it's Urena. 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 Yeah. This is Martin Urena, and uh, he is an NRVTA graduate technician, and he's here in the Phoenix area. One of the things that I've come across a couple of times, uh, some of the different parks that I've been in while I'm here, is people asking me who I would recommend to do some work on their rigs, and they all see. Some of them call them lot lizards. I know for the 18 wheelers. That's got a whole different connotation, but for, for, for the RVers, it tends to be the guys that get into the park and just kind of cruise around looking for something that might, oh, your awning's got a tear in it, hey, we can do it for this price and stuff like that. And you still end up paying a small fortune for it, and you don't necessarily know what you're getting. Some of these guys just bought a truck, put a fancy name on it, have no real training other than some basic mechanical knowledge and they're going at it willy-nilly to fix it up. And you don't know if there's any guarantee behind it, if they're gonna do a good job or what. So it's nice to know that part of your community here on uh, our license to travel, is some of the people have got some amazing credentials. Like right now, Martin himself here is a, a, a graduate and he's out doing the important things to help us stay on the road. So one of the first questions I got for you is, the training itself, um, where did you get it? And can you kind of explain it to the people that don't really know what that is? So I went to the NRVTA. Mm -hmm. 
uh, which is in Athens, Texas. That's just southeast of Dallas, I think it is. Dallas, Fort Worth, yes. Yeah. And um, so it's really great. It's at the Texan RV park. Oh, okay. So they have an RV park there. So you take your own RV when you go there mm -hmm. because you're going to have to practice on it. Ah. If you don't have an RV, they have uh, cabins. Yeah. And then you find a buddy while you're in class and then you work, work on Work with him on it. Yeah. Yeah. And so they also have usually anywhere between five to ten RVs yeah. on site that have been bugged. Ah. Okay. So you can figure that out. Um, you always have to take the RV owner's course first. Right. That's a one week course. Now, the great thing about that is, um, say you wanted to go, mm -hmm. your wife gets to join you if you oh, so cool. choose yeah. for the first hour of every day's mm -hmm. classes. And that's where they teach you about uh, running the business. Oh, very cool. And then uh, your spouse, because um, it's not all guys, there are plenty of yeah. women out there that are RV very techs capable. Yeah. and amazing RV techs. Yeah. Um, but your spouse has other things that they provide throughout the entire week. Wow. There's luncheons, there's things like learning how to cook in an RV, mm -hmm. proper RV stove usage. Yeah. Because RV stoves are notoriously <laughs> difficult to use. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> you ever try to bake a cake in one? Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> but yeah, and so they have all kinds of extra stuff. They take yeah. care of not just the student, but anyone with them. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, they have fishing. Yeah. On site. Ooh, nice. Yeah. You can fish in their lake. Yeah. Um, and the ducks. <laughs> <laughs> that's a thing. If you talk to anyone from the NRVTA, the yeah. ducks, they will they will come to your site and then they will sit in your chairs and not and leave. Not leave. <laughs> that's but pretty yeah. awesome. <laughs> um, so, but you take the first week and it teaches you basically any general person. Yeah. And you can actually fix 90% of the issues on your RV. That's pretty amazing. Now, you can't do the super technical stuff. Right. But most of the time, it's small problems that people will call me for. Yeah. And I go there and show up, and I'm in and out in 10 minutes, and then they're upset. Yeah. Because... I could have done that. Yeah. Well, you sh if you'd have taken the training, Correct. you could have. And they also have an online course. Oh, that's cool, too. Yeah. So um, it comes on like a thumb drive. Yeah, a little USB drive. Yeah. yeah. You just plug it in. All the courses are there. Mm -hmm. um, everyone there is great. And the thing is, is once you go there, mm -hmm. you're family. Oh, that's cool. I can call my instructors at any time. Yeah. Even, and I've been doing this for three years now. Yeah. It was three years ago I went to school. That's awesome. Now, what are some of the things that you've been trained to do? Well, so... Just in a nutshell. They have a multitude of courses. Mm -hmm. um, so basically you're going to learn air conditioning units, mm -hmm. refrigerators. Very common out here, yeah. Yeah, refrigerators, furnaces, and water heaters. Okay. Yeah. And all the electronics that go into all That's of that, how to trace stuff down. Yeah. You're going to learn how to find shorts. You're going to learn how to replace equipment. You're going to learn how to make jacks work when they don't. Very good. Both slide hydraulic outs. and electric. Yeah. Slide outs. Wow. Um, there is a, there's a guy there, uh, Chandler Cooper. Mm -hmm. um, he actually has a, his own business. He makes tools ah. and they're amazing yeah but they teach you how to do everything without those tools yeah that's awesome that's really good and Chandler was my exteriors teacher yeah. so we were working on slides and jacks and stuff like that yeah. and they literally had a couple of frames just frames right no bodies on it just frames and well, we that's learned cool. so everything on how yeah. to do it, yeah. Very cool. Um, one of the other things I'm sure some of the people will ask is, do you give estimates? 
I do. If it is requested, I can do an estimate. Okay. Um, the only problem is, is to do an estimate, I have to show up. Right. So the customer would have to pay my service call fee. Now, most people don't realize that any time you call a technician out, you're going to pay to have them come. It doesn't matter who or where it is. If they have to get in their vehicle and drive to your location, it costs them time, gas, money. So they need to be compensated for it because this is a business and they have to feed their families as well. And vehicle wear. And the vehicle wear and tear, yeah. yeah. Do you do pre-buy inspections? I am not a certified inspector. Okay. I am just an RV repair technician. But they technician. have a course for that, don't they? They do. They yeah. do. It's um, three weeks, I believe. Yeah. In fact, I think there's one right now in the park a couple aisles over from us. They're a YouTube channel family, mm -hmm. and uh, they, uh, they do the in a lot of the inspections. Yes. And yeah. there's a lot of people that do do inspections. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, I myself do not. Uh, okay. I have checked over RVs for people. Yeah as a technician right but um, inspectors they go way more in depth they I, like check fluids and everything it's um, where are you located uh, right now I'm located in Mesa okay so how far will you go to do work so for my basic service call fee which is a uh, hundred dollars yeah. and I know that sounds that's expensive cheap. no it's cheap but I go 50 miles and then it's a dollar a mile after that after that that's yes. that's not bad at all. Yeah, yeah that's pretty good. Um, and I do cover the entire state of Arizona. Wow, that is awesome. Um, are there things that you won't work on in, or don't so, have the abilities to because of constraints on what you so can carry in your vehicle? Due to licensing and also the fact that I don't have a shop, it's just my vehicle. Okay. Um, in the state of Arizona, there are some licensings that you have to have special insurance to yeah. do for, like, say, drivetrain, motor work, yeah. uh, suspension, things like that. Yeah, gotcha. Um, so I don't generally do that. I can, you know, I can repack wheel bearings, wheel bearings and, and stuff like change that. Change tires, right. stuff like that. But I can't actually like change out an axle. Gotcha. I understand. I can't pull a slide out and put a new one in. Do you do warranty work? I do do warranty work. Um, so it depends if it is manufacturer warranty or extended warranty. Gotcha. Yeah. So manufacturer warranty I've got no problem with. Okay, because it's guaranteed they're going to pay. Yeah. And you usually get approval for that ahead of time. Well, with either <coughs> one you have to get approval ahead right. of time. Right, okay. So, um, but the way I do it with the extended warranty is the customer pays me, yeah, and then I do all the paperwork that's required, and then they get they reimbursed. submit it to get the money back for yeah. it. Okay, that makes sense. Um, you already said your base rate that was uh, my service call fee is a hundred dollars, and the base rate is and my base rate is one fifty an hour. One fifty an hour. Yeah. Okay, would you? Well, I guess there's no way to tell what an average job is, so I'm not even going to go there. Well, actually, um, <clears throat> generally, most of my jobs are under an hour. Really? Yes. Wow, that's excellent. Um, there are bigger ones. Yeah. You know, if I have, um, say, someone's awning got ripped completely off their rig, that's probably mm -hmm. a three or four hour job. Oh, yeah. But I let them know ahead of time. Right. I, I don't ever want to surprise a customer. Yeah. With. A huge bill. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's that's just so not, nice. Yeah, yeah, that's not. Yeah, <laughs> that's so good. And do you accept insurance? Like I do Geico accept insurance like payments. Yes. Okay, that's um, cool. I've worked with uh, Progressive a couple of times already. They've been pretty cool. And for us too. Uh, AAA. And AAA. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Um, how about do you offer discounts? Like uh, if they pay cash, do they so, get a uh, break on it? It depends. Yeah. So if I have to do a whole lot of extra stuff because they've tried to fix it first, <laughs> then no. Yeah, gotcha. But yeah, if generally if they pay cash, I knock about 20% off. Well, that's awesome. That's um, really good. I also, yeah. I also waive the service call fee for veterans. Oh, very cool. That's fantastic. And you will always see me in a red shirt on Friday. Oh, fantastic. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So very cool. Um, 
my questions were just the absolute base and most basic of all. Are mm -hmm. there any other things you can think of that you'd like to tell our community? Well, any, anyone who can really should mm -hmm. think about taking that basic course at the NRVTA. Yeah. And I, I get no kickbacks or no money from this, so this is just honest, right. my honest opinion. Right. Um, and sorry, I, but... Uh, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that basic course yeah. will save you so much grief. Oh, I, I can believe it. I, my dad was an air conditioning refrigeration mechanic mm -hmm. down at Fort Huachuca for eons. And a little bit of his knowledge rubbed off on me. I can check a capacitor on the ACs on the rig. I can change out a motor if I had to. Make sure you discharge them first. <clears throat> yeah, I do. I'm, I've been looking at buying an actual discharging unit rather than using my insulated screwdriver. <laughs> I hate surprises. As a firefighter, mm -hmm. when I worked for Mesa, the one thing we respected more than anything else was electricity. Mm -hmm. If it was on the house side of whatever was going on, I'd flip the breakers, that's fine. Yeah. Anything else, I won't touch. When it comes to RVs, if I can't take care of it by flipping the main pedestal breaker, I don't want anything to do with it. I want someone that knows what they're doing to be in there squirreling around underneath rather than me getting fried by it. Oh yeah, yeah. well, and the thing is, is you're three different electrical systems in an RV. Oh yeah, because you've got the 12 volt system. You've got two 12 volt systems yep. and a 120 volt. Oh wow. Well that so, was something else I was going to ask, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but um, do you do solar stuff? I do. Okay. I do. Um, in fact, I installed solar on my own rig. Did you really? Yeah. Um, do you do got, Victron or anything like that? Is there a specific brand or? It depends on what the customer is willing to pay for. Ah, gotcha. Victron's now, probably the mine, upper end. Mine, I did uh, Sun Solar. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> got all of my MPPT controllers and everything off of Amazon. Oh, very cool. Because I went really cheap. Yeah. But it um, still does its job. Yeah. Um, and then I couldn't, uh, I really couldn't justify paying for Battleborn batteries. No, I, I know a lot of people that can't. There's, so. And then there's too many other new ones that are coming up and out. Well, so. I, I like the idea of supporting an American company, but then again, I don't have the funds to be able to invest in them like that. Well, for close to $300 less. Yeah. Um, you can get uh, big rear batteries. Yeah. Uh, and that's Todd Henson again through the NRVTA. Yeah. You know? But he created his own lithium batteries. Wow. That are just as good as Battleborn's. Yeah. Over twice the capacity. Because Battleborn's generally 100 amp hours. Yeah. His smallest is 280 amp hours. What would you assume or guess a about, I don't know, a, a thousand watts of solar? would cost to put in just general if, if you want a thousand watts of solar depending on if mm -hmm. you want um, monocrystalline I have no idea what the difference okay. is yeah. so there's different types of solar panels um, top end I'm saying probably about six grand yeah and bottom end and the, and this is just for a simple just 1,000 watts yeah this is not with an inverter Probably bottom end, you could get away with it. Maybe five grand. Yeah. So if you go with an inverter, you're looking at, so you could do the whole house setup. Yeah. About um, how much for a decent inverter. Inverters and converters, um, depending on how you want to do it. If you want to like, say, run an AC off of yeah. solar, which a lot of people want to do. Everybody seems to want to do that. And yeah. it's really, really difficult mm -hmm. because you actually have to step up 12 volt battery power yeah. To 120 volts. Oh, yeah. And then that requires a whole lot more amperage. Yeah. So you're looking at a huge battery bank just to run your AC for four or five hours. Wow. Yeah. Um, now, I know there is one gentleman um, I saw on YouTube, and he has this amazing solar setup on the top of his rig, and it fans out. It's a... It's a uh, um, Where's Three, the 390 where's RK? The, yeah, where's the cowboy hat? Thing? Yes, uh -huh. yes. It, the wings that mm -hmm. come out. Yes, yes. Ooh, he can power a whole nother rig with it. And he can power a whole nother rig with it. Oh my! No, I, we couldn't do that. That's that's a twenty or thirty thousand dollars. And then he had to put three axles on. Yeah. To be able to carry the weight of everything he put into Correct. it. Correct. And that's the other thing people have to understand is, 
anytime you add something to your rig, gotta pull something out. You're gonna have to either pull something out or you're gonna have to actually get it recertified. Yeah, holy cow. And is that going back to the manufacturer to have them do that? Um, some states, it depends on which state you're in. Yeah. So some states you have to go to the actual manufacturer and have them recertify it, yeah. reweigh it, everything like that. Mm -hmm. Other states, like say Arizona, all you have to do is go to a cat station, yeah. reweigh it, totally empty with just whatever you've added, and then they'll issue a new sticker for the gross value weight. The I may pick your weight. brain on that a little bit later on. That yeah. might be food for another video at some time. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Well, Martin, anything else you can think of? Um, this this no, could go I'm, on forever, I'm it, sure. It There's somebody now that I'm going to recommend in this area, and he's a member of our community, and he's more than willing to do everything that he can to help out. So and that's awesome. I definitely am. That's, uh, that's, that's fantastic. kind of the whole reason why I got into this. Yeah, that so. is so super. Martin, thank you so very much. Thank I you. really appreciate it, and for your hard work. Oh, yeah. It means a lot to all of us out there. It's been awesome. It, you know, it takes a lot to keep those things on the road. It does, it yeah. does. And, you know, they're basically, it's a house going through an earthquake every time you drive. We have viewers in um, South America, Argentina, mm -hmm. in Canada, in Germany, in uh, Norway, in uh, Spain. Oh my gosh, we've got them all over the world that I can think of right now. Some of them are watching it on translated into their particular channel. Mm -hmm. We may get only 50 or 60 views initially, but over time they start getting hits yeah. and they begin to explode and they start getting bigger because people are using YouTube as the largest search engine in the world right now. Basically, yeah, it yeah. is. So. so if you want to learn how to do something, go to YouTube. Yep. So. Very cool. Thank you so much for your time, and it's been wonderful meeting you. And you as well. I hope you and your wife do real well. And I may be giving you a call back later on to do another interview about some more stuff, maybe some on the solar itself. So thanks again. Thank you. All righty, very cool. And thank you all for showing up for this uh, edition of uh, our License to Travel. Thank you, Martin, for all your gracious help. And to all of us out there, please travel safe.